Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Why I Love Flagler County, your local podcast of spotlighting the local businesses and why they love being in Flagler County, doing a business in Flagler County, and otherwise. So I'm super honored to have my guest, Patty, with me today. I know Patty through the Professional Women of Flagler County networking group, which has just been an amazing group. If anyone's listened to more than one episode, you know I've gotten a lot of great women from there. So that's definitely an amazing group to be with. So Patty's in digital marketing, and she's so kind. And we've been talking a few days I think here and here trying to get this on so I really appreciate her taking the time so thank you Patty for coming on today I appreciate it thanks for having me Macy of course so I'll I'll give you a chance to talk a little bit about your digital marketing because I'm so interested in that because I think for digital marketing there's so many different avenues that you can go down now uh go down nowadays Mm -hmm. um but I'd love for you to talk a little bit on your journey to Flagler County because I don't think I know this so (laughs) where how long have you been in Flagler County and what brought you here um I've been in Flagler County since about 2012 and um, the journey that brought me here and for, um, it was for the better. Um, divorce brought me here, basically. Mm, yeah. um, the move to Florida from Illinois uh, happened, like, I would say around 2008 or so. And at the time, I first lived in Oviedo and then lived in St. Augustine. Um, I loved St. Augustine so much, but going through the divorce and whatnot, it was rather expensive to be able to raise four boys. So I made, um, you know, the next, you know, best closest decision, which was Palm Coast at the time was super affordable for me. Um, And, you know, it was easier for the kids making that transition. And we were still close enough to St. Augustine that, you know, I wasn't like, you know, like completely like wrecking their life or anything like that. Um, So it was still within close proximity. Um, yeah, really the affordability of Palm Coast is what brought me here. Um, and just in the time since that I've been here since 2012, like, it's just, it's booming. It's so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, I mean, being here since 2012, you're you're basically a veteran, I would say, yeah. of Palm Coast, because yeah. there's just so many of us who've been here for like, less than two, three years. So right. that's, I'm sure you've just seen so much growth in all aspects of Palm Coast. For real. Um, So like when I first moved here, the mega hub shopping area was pretty much what is now called Island Walk and 100 was just getting developed. I think Target was there and that was about it for the most part. And then it just kind of boomed from there. And even just recently um, during the COVID epidemic, like just, you know, people moving in from all over like that, you know, brought more people in. Um, kind of caught Flagler County off guard a little bit because we didn't have a in- infrastructure set in place, you know, um, to be able to like accept everyone in. But it seems like everyone's getting along and, you know, Flagler County's just chugging right along and trying to keep up with um, people coming in, um, you know, even businesses coming in. So that that was one of the things that I found appealing too was you know being able to like actually have and own and operate a business in Flagler County was pretty simple and and affordable for that matter. Yeah, I think that's a great segue. So I'd love for you to talk a little bit on how you started your business, which is mm-hmm. it's PS Marketing Maven. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. That's correct. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so how long have you had that, and what inspired you to start it? Yeah. Um. So I founded um, PS Market Maven back in, I want to say it was 2016. It's been a minute. <laughs> um, and basically, um, my background was in film school and television and all the um, radio, newspaper, all the traditional media outlets, if you will. Um, my degree was in broadcast communication. So I spent some time on the air, on the radio, um, on television. I was more behind the scenes. Um, So I I made the transition from film to um, television um, out of the necessity for um, family. Um, In my sophomore year of film school, I ended up getting pregnant and I had to take care of responsibilities. So, you know, being in film, I'm like, well, am I going to be able to raise a son and be on location at the same time. And that didn't really gel well with me too much. So I was like, all right, if 
fundamentally, like it was basically the same things that I needed to apply to television. So the transition was super simple. Um, I ended up with my degree in mass communications, broadcast performance, um, and just, you know, being able to like get in. And this was like, I'm dating myself here, but it was probably the 90s. So being able to transition from trans um, traditional media to digital media, like I was right there when it was happening. So um, it was somewhat easier for me. Um, as technology advanced, there was a little bit more of a learning curve that I had to like speed up on um, compared to the people coming in during the digital age. You know, like I was like, you know, um, the theories were all the same. Mm -hmm. It was just not having to do it manually and just right. being able to do it digitally. So, you know, caught up to speed and ran with it. Um, being, um, so I worked for different companies like Verizon Wireless, um, AT&T, Metro PCS. Um, I worked for local television affiliates, radio stations, newspapers, and everything that I've learned and applied, you know, I was like, all right, so, uh, you know, the divorce took its toll and whatnot. So I really was looking for something where I could have that family work balance. And it was my other half who, you know, had the idea. He was like, well, what do you love to do? And I'm like, I love really like helping people out, connecting people. Um, that, that was like my biggest thing that I enjoyed the most. And the skill set that I had with, um, photography, videography, doing audio, things to that nature. And, you know, um, the whole graphic design component as well. I'm like, he was like, well, what's your favorite thing to do? And at the time, um, I was doing uh, marketing for some local companies in the area like Surf Pro and Southern Title. And, you know, um, both great companies. And it was just, it got to the point where I was working a lot nights and weekends and not really having that opportunity to spend enough time with the kids. So I'm at that point, he was like, well, why don't you go into business for yourself? And I'm like, no way. You know, I was like, you know, in a regular job working for someone else, you get the benefits of like medical and dental and 401ks and whatnot. So it was really, really scary to like leave those benefits behind and, you know, go for it on my own. And, you know, after taking that leap of faith, I was like, all right, I jumped right in and I wanted things to look like aesthetically pleasing, you know, just perfect. Right. And I was kind of afraid initially to launch. And he was like, it doesn't have to be perfect. Get in there, just go do it. And I'm like, all right. So, um, you know, people still knew me from in the area and stuff. So coming up with like, um, my contact list wasn't hard. Like I had a great set, you know, a full book of contacts. So I'm like, all right, let me try this. So you know, like after about 20 no's, you get the one yes. And that one yes is like, great. All right. Like I, I got this. I think I can do it, you know? And then from there, it was like word of mouth, you know, um, grassroots um, marketing and things like that. And then word start to, you know, happen. And they're like, Hey, Patty, can you help me out with this? You know, I need you like, what, what are your thoughts on which platforms I should use to promote my business, things like that. And I'm like, all right, people are like, you know, they need help. Obviously the need was definitely here in Flagler County back then as well. Um, it seems like, uh, Flagler County is, um, a little bit behind, um, the, the learning curve, I guess, when it comes to like the digital age, if you will, but sure. the need was definitely here. And right now, you know, everyone's doing their thing and it's, it's really great. Like we kind of like caught up now. So, um, yeah, it was, it was like, it was scary at first and, and being in Flagler County is like the best place to op operate your business out of. It's not expensive at all. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, like I can literally do my job from anywhere in the world. So that's pretty awesome as well. But, um, you know, ha having like uh, more sunshiny days than anything else, like makes it all better as well. Um, and there's just a lot of great things about Flagler County um, that it has to offer that, you know, you might as well make the most of it and yeah. call Flagler County your HQ. 
Right. And I mean, I'm sure someone you're from Illinois, you know a lot about like dreary days because yeah. I'm from Michigan and I, you know, experience the same weather. <laughs> it's like you'd wake up and you're like, I don't know what time in the day it is. Right. I um, could, it could it's be pretty too funny. Late. Right. Because like um, originally I'm from California. I call it oh. Illinois home because that's where I spent most of my life. Um, So, yeah, it's been it's been a great transition. But yeah, like for me, the best part about Illinois were the four seasons you don't really get that here but right. you can kind of modify it if you will um just you know crank up the ac a, a little bit more and then you we can, do have like, a little bit of cold front out. right now yeah. so i mean i i enjoy the cold front because yeah it just it doesn't you have the sun for the most part yep. i know you've had some dreary days for the past like few weeks which has been crazy but i'm sure we're looking back up to a brighter future yep. <laughs> literally um i love the, I love the like chilly because it's not too cold you're not getting snow right. you just put on a hoodie yep. and you're like this is good and i like that part <laughs> for sure um compared to maybe like miami where it's like always Hot. Oh yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, and you perfectly answered um my third question as well is like what do you like about Flagler County? And I think those are all excellent points is it's so affordable. And I think there are so many groups now, and I can attest to what Flagler County was like maybe two years ago. So maybe it's a more of a newer change, but I've noticed there are just so many go-getters in Flagler, which I didn't know There's... if I saw coming but I think it's if you look in the right places there are just some really motivated people who want to help you and want to get things done and I find that so lovely it is it is um the support in the community as well like from your your native Floridians to your snowbirds to Mm -hmm. um people migrating from the north down to the south like you know it's um it's like any other community the difference is you know it's we're a little more friendlier here and it might be the sunshine factor, but <laughs> it's, it, it works pretty well. Yeah, for sure. I definitely think, and I think it's, um, it's, it's a great segue into my next question is what would you suggest to maybe a newcomer to the Flagler area or maybe Florida on how to get integrated into the local community? Cause sometimes it can be daunting. You're new, you go to groups and everyone knows each other except you. And you're like, mm-hmm. I have no idea where to start. Um, so, um, for me, the easiest thing to do was just to get out there. Um, as a mom of four sons, you know, we had basketball practice, school, that kind of thing. But when you're at those practices, you're more focused on, you know, watching your kid, perf- your kid perform. Right. So um, you're not really talking to the other moms or, you know, some people do. But for me, I was just like, all right, I'm at their soccer matches. I was there to like watch their games. I wasn't there to mingle or whatever. Um, So for me, it was like, you know, getting out there, joining some of those groups and um, doing a lot of research online and really, really um, taking the initiative to make sure that the groups that you're looking at is going to give you what you need. Um, there are some groups out there where, you know, your time is just as valuable as everyone else's. So you want to make sure that you're picking the right groups that you're networking with and getting out there. Um, I call it like intentional networking. So like anytime I go into a group or to an event, I'm like, all right, I'm going to go to this event or I'm going to go check out this group because I want to ABC. Um, Mm -hmm. Before I leave that event or that group or meeting or whatever, I want to make sure that I made at least, you know, five contacts, 10 contacts, like of different people that I've never met before. And, you know, um, Flagler County, it we're getting there in numbers and whatnot, but it's it's like it's not that hard to do at all. And you know, like you always run into people from the Midwest or from right. the West Coast. So it, it's it's pretty friendly around here. And and it's it's approachable, I would say. It's uh low stress, like um, everyone's just friendly. I guess that's what makes it like just easier to do. So you don't have to be like anxious or nervous or anything like that but definitely um go in intentionally to these groups and make sure that you're there um to do it and if anything else you know you always make like a lot of friends and your friends end up becoming your support system and it just you know makes the community thrive a lot better as well perfect i think that's a great 
piece of advice, I think the intention is really important because people can see through where like if you're super disorganized or if you just kind of want to go there for one specific reason that isn't a good reason maybe or something like that, people can really see through that. So having Mm -hmm. that goal of like, hey, I want to talk to some different people just to learn more about either the community, what they do, how they can help me, how I can help them. And I think people will just see kind of right through that. I know that sounds cheesy, but it's just one of those things where you have to go out there and just talk to people and then let's let the words kind of form your own relationships um well Patty I really appreciate you coming out and taking a few minutes out of your day to spend with me and give me some really amazing solid advice and then also sharing a lot about your story I think that was a really inspiring Mm -hmm. story um what is the best way someone can contact you and what are some of the reasons that someone might be like oh I've been thinking about that I think Patty now can help me so (laughs) what are some ways that people can do that um, so some of the, um, if there's anyone in need of help with their online presence, whether it's their website, their social media, their content creation, um, anything as it applies to digital marketing, I'm, I'm here to help for sure. Um, and the best way to contact me is um, by my phone number. It's 386-585-5074. And text is always best because sometimes I'm on a film shoot or something and all the phones have to be silenced and whatnot. Um, otherwise, my email address is patty at psmarketingmaven.com. And my website is www.psmarketingmaven.com. Perfect. So I'll make sure I have all that information in the description so people can access that just a little easier. Make sure you reach out to Patty. I was looking at her website just before she hopped on and she has some really great videos. So that's definitely something that you want to keep in mind. Well, again, thank you, Patty, for the time today. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you all soon. Thank you, Macy. Bye-bye.